today I have five different ways that I like to keep track of my food. I think a lot of us are aware that dietary choices play a really big role in whatever goals you have, whether that's gaining strength, losing some body fat, growing a certain muscle group. Our food choices play a really big role. And so a lot of us are constantly hearing about people tracking food and most often tracking calories along with that. And it's for good reason. Keeping record of what we eat can increase mindfulness, awareness of our patterns day to day, and can just be a good form of self-monitoring so that you can have some sense of accountability even if nobody else is going to see the record of what you ate. And counting calories is one of the most widely talked about, most commonly used ways of monitoring your food but it doesn't necessarily work for everyone for a few reasons. It can be tedious, it can feel discouraging if you're not hitting the targets that the app or you know website has set for you, and in the worst case it can be triggering for people who have had a past with disordered eating or just generally feel like seeing those numbers are not really supportive for whatever your goals are. I've experimented with many different methods over the years and most of the time I'm not using any of these methods, but I do find that depending on exactly what I'm looking for or needing at a certain time, it can be helpful to have different options with and without calories involved. So I'm gonna go through them from the least detailed to the most detailed and maybe you'll pick up one or two ideas for how you might like to approach keeping track of what you're eating. So the first one is just keeping a really vague log of what you're eating with very little description involved. I got a planner that just happens to have this built-in section for, you know, writing down what you ate each day, but there's very little room. And so at most I might just write something like smoothie, salad, or like burrito bowl, stir fry, like you can't really, there's no room to put something like, you know, what are all the things that you put into the smoothie or the stir fry or whatever. So it really just acts as like a trigger to when you look back, you can see, oh yeah, I know what I usually put in a smoothie or in a burrito bowl. So this would be good for you if you just really want a high level overview of the things that you're eating, maybe just the simple act of writing down, you know, for a breakfast I had eggs and toast. Maybe just that's enough for you to create some sense of awareness and maybe accountability if you're aiming to incorporate specific things. It's also good for you if you just do not want to spend much time logging your food. <laughs> Some of the other methods can get a little more time consuming, so I totally understand that having just something that's so quick and easy, but still kind of gets the job done, can be a good option to have. So the second method is still writing down, you know, just the things that you're eating, no numbers involved, but providing a little bit more detail. So maybe let's use smoothie again, because it's, uh, it can look really different depending on what you're putting in that smoothie. So in this method, you have more space to kind of break it down. So, okay, I had a smoothie this morning and then underneath that I might put mixed berries, half a banana, a tablespoon of almond butter, some frozen kale, and half a scoop of protein powder. And then what I like to do, I mean, you can take, this is kind of like method 2.5, <laughs> you can then go through and highlight different categories throughout your day. So let's say I've written out my full day. It includes a little more detail than the first method. And now I can go through and um, kind of color code it so that you can quickly see either by macronutrient or just category of foods, however you wanna do it. You can see what you're eating a lot of and maybe not much of. So for me, I use five different colors. I have my little markers and I'm gonna highlight things based on macronutrient what's you know the main macronutrient profile so protein carbs and fat will each have their own color and then I have a separate category for greens and veggies because I'm trying to eat more of those and then similarly I have another category for things that are just like treats like little indulgences I it's just I'm eating it for pleasure and I just want to kind of see how often throughout the day or the week am I turning to those things without any judgment. So here's what that would look like for a sample day for me. And again, if I can see a lot of pink, which is my code for, you know, the treats and maybe almost no green, then that's just a little signal to me to, hey, maybe I can shift things, look for more opportunities to add uh, greens or veggies into my day. And maybe I wanna reflect on 
what's making me choose a lot of those treats. Maybe I don't care, but at least I'm aware of it and I can do with this information whatever I want to. So this option is good for you if you want a little bit more detail about what you're eating. You wanna break down the meals a little bit more and maybe you want just kind of a broad overview of the components of what you're eating a lot of. Option number three is an app called Eight, and this option is good for you if you like the convenience of an app and you're trying to make some connections between your food choices and how you feel or the circumstances under which you normally eat. I love this app because it tells you a lot of things like how much time is there usually between your meals and your snacks. It can tell you kind of like on average. It prompts you to log things like where did you eat this meal or this snack? Were you in front of your work computer? Were you sitting at the table? Um, who were you eating with? Were you alone with family, with friends? Were you hungry or was it a craving? How satisfied did you feel afterwards? Like, did you get what you wanted out of the meal? So all these really awesome things that bring so much more awareness to why we're making different choices and maybe you might see that, oh my goodness, I always eat in front of my work computer. Maybe I wanna work on stepping away or wow, I almost never mark that I feel satisfied after my meal. So what can I do to increase that satisfaction, whether that's adding more flavors I like or needing more protein and fiber to last me longer, whatever that may be this app gives you a lot of awesome details that you can work with. And another thing that I love about this app is you can simply upload pictures of your meals. So again, maybe you don't super care about breaking down every component. And if you made it or bought it, you probably know anyway. So any details that you can't get from looking at the picture, you can probably just recall yourself. So this makes it very convenient. It takes very little time to just snap the picture, upload it, fill out a few prompts, and then be on your way. And if you want to type out more details, then you have the option. All right, option number four is to track, and we're gonna start to involve numbers here, but you're only keeping track of the macronutrients or the vitamins, whatever it may be that you specifically care about. This is a good option for you if you are trying to hit certain targets or keep certain nutrients within um, you know, a certain range, such as protein, or sodium, but you don't wanna be confronted with your daily totals, especially of just your total calories because maybe that is still a little bit triggering for you and you're just trying to focus on a couple specific things, whether that's because you're trying to hit a strength goal and you want more protein to support that or maybe your doctor has recommended sticking with a certain sodium range to support a healthy blood pressure. For me, this will be, you know, I just like to have a high level overview of protein, fat, carbs, but when I'm only seeing those numbers, I'm not gonna do the math to be like, oh, that's my calorie total, even though I am aware that like, I could calculate it. So I'm gonna write down protein, carbs, fat, sodium, saturated fat, and added sugar. And those are the things that I just kind of like to know. So again, this can be done on paper. It could be done on your notes app. Probably not, I haven't found an app that can track these things, but not show you the calorie total. So if you find one, put it in the comments, that's awesome. But I would probably just be writing them down and then maybe do the totals at the end of the day. I will say that you may need to do a little looking things up if you're not eating packaged foods because Obviously, if you're, let's say, grabbing a protein bar or something pre-made, you can just look at the food label and only write down the protein and the sodium or whatever. But if you are making a homemade meal, you might need to do some estimating, but that should still be pretty reasonable to do. But don't get too bogged down, especially if your goal is kind of just like to generally see, am I going like way over my recommended added sugar or whatever it may be? Um, am I generally hitting my protein goal? That's what this approach would really be used for in my mind. And then the fifth and final option that I'm going to offer today is of course to use a more traditional tracking app that you've probably been familiar with. So of course there's the notorious MyFitnessPal. There's also Chronometer. I don't know if that's how you say it. <laughs> That's how I say it. But the one that I really like is called Macro Factor. And the reason I like this one is I find that it's a little more supportive of goals in either direction. So whether you wanna lose some fat or gain muscle, I think it's less 
skewed to just give you a really low calorie target assuming that you want to lose weight it does cost money but i did pay for the yearly subscription and i like that you can kind of fill out what's your goal but then you can also fill out what is your kind of macronutrient preference are you looking to get the most amount of protein possible for whatever reason then you can also pick your kind of like macro distribution that you prefer so do you feel better when you eat more carbs or do you feel better when you eat more fat and it kind of just breaks it down for you and then you can also choose to do kind of like a coached program it's all just an algorithm but it's really cool because you put in what your goal is so let's say your goal is to let's use the goal of building muscle so you want to be growing so you're going to need to be in probably a bit of a surplus calorically. Each week you'll do a little check-in. So you'll, you know, you'll track your days. After the week you will click check in and it'll kind of see also taking into account the weight data that you've put in, whether however often you're weighing yourself, you put that into the app and it'll see, okay, are you growing? Is your weight going up if that is your goal? And if it is, then it won't probably change your calories. But if it's, if you're not, then it might add a little bit. And conversely, if you are trying to lose weight and it gives you your starting range, which I found to be reasonable, it wasn't automatically like 1200 calories, have fun. It was using a little bit more sophisticated data to give me something that felt way more reasonable than what my fitness pal did. And if it saw that I was losing weight gradually, it wouldn't change my recommendations. But if it saw that I wasn't really seeing the progress that I wanted to see yet, then it might just shave off like 10 to 50 calories for the next week per day. So it's really gradual and it doesn't just do things one time and then say, there you go. It evolves and it changes with you keeping whatever your goal is in mind. So this option is good for you if you like detail, if you don't mind taking the time that it requires to track, you can use a barcode scanner, which is helpful again for processed foods, but I still find detailed calorie tracking to be very tedious. I, I just, especially if I'm making a homemade meal, don't want to go through that. But some people don't mind. Some people are used to it. Whatever. If it works for you, it works for you. And so this is good for you if you are also not easily triggered by seeing those numbers, seeing the calorie totals. You won't beat yourself up if you are over or under target and you just really like having that data so those are the five options for me i don't really do any one of these long term so if i'm going to use macro factor and get the most detail possible i'll probably just do it for a week or two and this is really helpful if i'm kind of approaching a new goal that i've set or kind of getting back in touch with a goal that maybe i lost sight of like over the holidays or whatever and i just kind of want to see all right where am i right now are my eating habits generally aligning with the direction that i want to go in and let's gather some data but i don't like doing it more than that because then i do find that not only does it just take a lot of time that i don't feel is worth it for me but I also feel myself starting to feel the pressure of needing to restrict, even if it's in a very minor way. Mentally, I don't like seeing the numbers going with that. So I'd rather just eat in accordance with my hunger, aim for a nutritious balanced diet and call it a day, whatever happens with my body. And then there are other times where I just kind of want to use one of these less detailed methods uh, get a general sense of how I'm doing. Are these the foods that I want to be eating? Am I logging baked goods like every day of the week? And maybe that doesn't really feel great to me. Maybe I, which I do tend to get stomach aches after that. And so maybe I want to just be more aware of those habits. All of these methods can be used however you want them. They can be combined. You can use different ones at different times. You can go back and forth or you can use none at all which again is what I mostly do. I mostly listen to my body, take into account the nutrition knowledge that I have, and I just go off of how I feel. Let me know what method you prefer or if there's another one that I haven't listed. And thanks for watching.